going to show you ways that you can use your white craft ink pad. Now, a lot of times this is overlooked in the catalog because it's not in the pl same place where you see all the other colors, the fabulous colors that Stampin' Up! has. It is actually on a separate page that has the specialty inks. And in the current 2022-23 catalog, it's on page 129. It's where you would find your Memento Black, your Versamark, your Stays on ink, and that's where you would find your Whisper White, along with the refill comes together. So a lot of times people wonder, well, what do you do with it? Well, I'm here to show you a lot of different ways and some tips and tricks for getting some projects done that include heat embossing, faux embossing, shading, and just regular stamping with your white craft ink pad. So thanks for joining in. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up down below. Leave a comment so I can better serve you and know what you like and what you're looking for. And don't forget to visit my blog, stampwithlorraine.com, and there you can sign up for my newsletter, as well as see lots of other tutorials and tips and tricks. So I hope you enjoy this one and stay tuned to the very end to see all the projects completed. White Craft Ink. Okay, when you get it, it's going to be in a box with the ink, a dry ink pad, uninked, plus your re-inker. So when you buy it, it'll come with both things. You don't have to order them separately. The reason for that is that this is really thick and it, it could dry out quick, more quickly because it sits more on top of the ink pad, on top of the foam. So it keeps better in here, you know, until you get it. So then when you get it, you do have to ink it up. And just very briefly, this is what you have to do. It is much thicker than your other ink. So you will have to squeeze it a little harder and um, rub it over your ink pad. Now I've already inked this up. I made it a little more juicy last night. Actually, this is a, a new one. So this is, um, I just inked it for the first time last night. All right. So you're going to add your ink on there and then you see how it's just sitting up on top of that ink pad. It's really thick and it's not seeping in like your other ink will. So you need to rub it in a little bit. I use the back of a plastic spoon. I just keep this handy. You could use your bone folder. You could use an old gift card or credit card, something that's plastic and it will just rub off. All right, so what you're looking for is some nice even coverage around your ink pad. So when you're stamping, your image isn't going to be too much ink in one spot and not enough in another spot. So you wanna just kind of even it out a little bit. Okay, and then you can just wipe it off with a paper towel or a baby wipe. Okay, I keep those handy right in my drawer here. Okay, so that cleans off really easily. Okay, so now your ink pad's ready to go. Of course, when you, if you want, you can stamp directly onto some dark paper. Obviously, if you do it on white, it's not gonna show up very much, but there are some fun techniques you can do with that as well. So I'm going to take one of these little um, fern type um, branches from the Forever Fern stamp set, one of my favorites, and we're going to stamp with the white directly on the black. Now, a lot of people, when they get this, are looking for a really bright, dark color, like a really, stark white against the darker cardstock. It's not necessarily going to come out this way, especially with this, which is that distinctive look because there's a lot of shading and um, some more subtle areas to each stamp. But I just wanted to show you the different ways that it, it can look. All right, so taking this, I'm going to Make sure I have really good coverage on my stamp. You want to make sure it's inked up well. Like I said, you're um, tap it a few times. You want to be careful not to rock it. You don't want white around the edges. You want to see that you have that nice coverage. And then you can, I'm going to just do like a random collage -y look here. And look how nice and rich that is, but it's not really, really, really bright. Let me hold that up to the camera in a second after I stamp a little bit more. Okay, so it, it does have um, a really nice look. It is a little bit more 
opaque, not like really stark and bright. Okay, there the light catches it a little bit better, I think. All right, um, and this is what I did with that card. I wanted to keep that kind of subtle look. I didn't want such a very bright, stark look to it. So what I did was I just mounted it on a little bit of silver to have a little more brightness. And I mounted that with dimensional dots onto soft succulent, which was embossed with the time-worn type embossing folder. It has some little splotches in there and some lettering um, that does look like old fashioned worn out paper. And then just mounted that with the black. So that could be a nice masculine card as well. Okay, keeping with the darker tones and the silver, you know, bringing in some metallic is good for a masculine card. So I didn't put a sentiment on here yet because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use it for, but I might use this stitch rectangle to keep it kind of simple. And um, obviously this is kind of long, but I would have a small word over here and then um, when I go to emboss it, move it over again so it cuts that strip a little smaller. So just an idea of how I might finish that card up. And you stay tuned to the end and you may see something with this card with the sentiment all finished up on there. Okay, so now another option that you can do is I'm just going to flip this over, stamp it again, and I'm going to show you what it looks like if you emboss it. All right, and... Again, you want to get your embossing powder on here before the ink dries too much. Okay, I should have used my embossing buddy first. I forgot. That's a little powdery pouch here that Stampin' Up! used to sell. And they don't anymore, but you can get them in different craft stores wherever they sell crafty things. Okay, so now with the embossing powder on there, we're going to use the heat gun to melt that powder on there. Many of you know how to do this, but for those of you who don't, I'll show you what that looks like in one second. Um, if I used my embossing buddy, it would um, keep out a lot of these little flecks here. So I'm just going to use a little, little brush to brush some of that away. And you know what? I don't care too much if it does have those flecks in there. That's kind of a little rustic look anyway. I haven't embossed with this one yet, so we'll see what it looks like. I'm just tapping off any extra powder so that I can get some of that detail of the leaves and the veins. So let's see what that looks like. So I haven't embossed with this one yet. So let me bring this over, move your embossing powder out of the way before you start using your embossing tool, which is kind of like a, a hot air tool. Okay, so I have my heat tool here. First thing to do is to let it run and let it get hot first before you even try to start embossing with it. And then you can either hold it or you can, um, with your fingers, you have to be careful you don't get too hot with it. I like to just hold it down like this sometimes. And you want to hold it over your powder until it starts to like give a melt or shiny look to it. Because this distinctive look, this has, um, a lot of fine little lines and shading in there. You're not going to get all that detail when you do heat emboss it, but I just wanted you to see the difference with the heat embossing versus just stamping right on with the white ink. Okay, so if you're looking for something much more bold against your darker color cardstock, that's what you would do. You would use your um, embossing powder and your heat tool to that to get that kind of look. All right, so that would be totally different. Well, not totally different, but <laughs> quite different. A little bit um, brighter, more bold kind of look if you had it on that instead of this. So it all depends on the kind of look that you that you want for that. All right, so now another thing that you can do is get a shadow effect with your um, stamping on colored cardstock. And I'm going to use that same stamp set, um, again, that same ink. Okay, so using soft succulent, there are two ways that you can do this. We're going to stamp with this soft succulent, the tone on tone, or you can go a little bit darker, depending on 
what colors you're using and how bold you want to look. And then we're going to stamp over it with the Whisper White. And you can also do it the other way around. You can do the Whisper White first and then the color, and you'll get a couple of different looks. So we're going to see what both of them are. So I'm going to do the succulent first. And again, I'm just going to do a random, yeah, that's what I wanted. Random design here. One in this way. Okay, so I have that, that random look. A nice little background, I'm mean, pretty as it is. But to get a different kind of look, I'm gonna clean this off first. And then I'm going to use my white. I'm going to go over it, over the same areas with white. Now it's okay, and in fact it's preferred if you don't get it exact, because you're going to create sort of a shadow effect. With the white over it, it's gonna create a, a lighter image on top but you'll still have some of the edges where it looks like a shadow underneath. Now, this is kind of easier with um, your photopolymer stamps that you can see through, but like I said, because it doesn't matter if you're exact or not, to come close is kind of what's preferred. So I'm going to ink that up with my white, and then I'm just going to go close to over where I had the other, and you can see how it makes that nice little shadow effect. Isn't that neat? Okay, so let me do that for all of them. Okay, so then you have that really neat shadow effect. It looks raised and um, it's like you have the shadows there. All right, so now let's try it the opposite way, opposite way around and see what that looks like real quick. So, I will do some in white, and then we'll go over it with the color. And I won't do the whole sheet, we'll just do part of it for now. All right. Okay, let's just do that half. Clean off your stamp, you don't want white on your color. All right, just use my chamois. As you can see, my chamois is well used. It gets stained, but you just rinse it under water and it gets all nice and clean. I love it. Okay, so now let's go over the top with the color this time and see what the difference is. Okay, I'm just gonna stamp over here, make sure I'm good. All right, and for this, I do like to stand up and get right over it. So this one, you're going to get a little bit more actual detail of the lines because it is going on top and not being kind of dulled over with the white. Okay, so there is a subtle difference. Get that close, you can see that compared to this one. So this one is a little bit softer look and this one has that more detail because you did the color second. Now, if you really wanted to be accurate with shadowing, what you would do, and I didn't pay attention to this because it didn't matter to me right now. What you would do is try to offset your second stamp in the same direction as you um, did the other images because if your light source was coming from this way then your shadow would be on the other side right and it would be that way for all your images so if you really wanted to be accurate with the way things look stamp everything in the same off your original in the same direction so if you're stamping here and you want to go slightly down and left then do the same thing with here slightly down and left on each of your stamped images okay but most people aren't going to be looking that closely but anyway so here is let me close this up here is a card that i put together using that concept okay i mounted this soft succulent on evening evergreen and of course i punched out some labels first so i will use one on this card and i will use one on another project another day. I have a little container 
in the drawer behind me that I keep all my extra little labels. When I need something, I just look in there, see what I could use. Okay, so obviously because this is dark, there are a couple of things you could do. I wanted to brighten this front up a little bit. Um, it looked a little dull to me. Um, if you wanted to, I know obviously stamping on something dark might not work so well unless you heat embossed it with white or gold or something. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to make another white label that could go on here. Now if I stamped, if I punch this, this is a punch, if I punch this out with white, obviously it would just cover it up and you wouldn't have... Um, the border around it. So let me show you um, what I did. I took the sentiment from Forever Ferns to a friend that makes me smile. All right, that can go for anything, right? A thank you, thinking of you, um, birthday. And we're going to make this a little bit smaller than this. I've shown this to you in other um, tutorials as well, but just as a review, um, I'm going to punch this, keeping close to the top. And I like stamping first and then punching it because you don't have, it's much easier to get it straight if you punch second because you can always move this and see if you're stamping sometimes it's hard to get it straight right okay so I'm going close to the top here and it's okay that there's space down there because I'm going to be cutting that off so it doesn't have to fill the whole thing so I'm going to just punch that and now, obviously, there's nothing left to hold on to as I'm putting that in there. So here's the trick. You take a post-it note. And I'm even just going to use half of this for now. And you stick to the post-it note like you have a little handle. And that way it can extend your paper, so to speak, so that you can get it in there. And now I'm just going to bring my cardstock my sentiment down a little lower to where I want it to be so it looks centered and then we're just punching the bottom and peel that off and then now you have um, a smaller piece with a border there and if you wanted to you could then I have an extra one here I'll show you you can always cut off the sides so that you have a border all the way around. Okay, I just go from one notch to the other. And if you wanted, well then you would have that border on all the sides. Okay, so different options you can do with that. All right, so I'll put that together completely and you can see that on the end. You can stamp a in a darker ink on some cardstock. Here I have Pumpkin Pie on Mango Melody. And what I did was I just took a clear block, picked up some ink on my ink pad, so it creates like a palette. And you can use a blender pen with a post-it note attached. <laughs> you could use a blender pen or you can use your um, your um, water color pens, your, your, um, these are my old aqua painters. Um, my new ones are over on the desk over there, but you could use that as long as you don't make it too watery. You will have more of a whitewash look if you use something with water in it. Um, but you can just use your blender, um, your blender pen to pick up some of that ink from your block, your palette, and you can just go over, I'm just going over those lines there. Again, the more ink you pick up, the stronger of a look it's going to be. Or you can leave it more of a lighter whitewash. Just to kind of highlight some of the details on your flower. So this is, like I said, just a tone on tone, adding that little white highlights on there. And it will get a little lighter as it dries, but you can always go over it again to make it darker if you wanted to. Um, for instance, let me show down here. This I did last night. So I'm going to just pick up some 
extra white ink and it's kind of like the first layer if you if you think about it, it's kind of like primer if you paint it's um, going to put a layer on your card stock and so then when it dries you can go over it with something else okay so I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but that is um, even whiter when I put my second layer on so again it depends on what kind of look over here I did very very light okay a little bit more of a whitewash look this one's a little bit darker so you can see the difference there so I'm going to you know, cut this at some point and then turn that into a card so stay tuned for that kind of back to the other concept of just stamping on dark cardstock I took mossy meadow and stamped my flower right on there and I was preparing to show you the next part of this technique. I said, you know what, that looks really pretty as it is. So I'm making a card just with that. And then I'll show you the next technique. So I took pear pizzazz and made a border around there because when I tried the white, it was just too stark, too, too much of a contrast. I wanted something a little softer. I embossed this with Pretty Flowers embossing folder. This is one that is not 3D. If you can see that on the camera, the top layer that's embossed is all the same level. It's, it's kind of flat on top. You don't have different heights like you do on a 3D embossing folder. But I wanted something a little bit more subtle. It's not exactly the same flower that's on um, the art gallery, but it's okay. You can mix your um, products, and I think that still looks good. Now, obviously, we needed a matte here, so I want to bring in a little shine. I already had this cut out in my stash, so I said, oh, well, well, that works perfectly. One thing that's nice about the stitched, the stitching on the shapes is it kind of locks right in when you try to overlay it. So I'm going to cut this down to have just a little border and leave it, um, and then I'll put my sentiment down here. But I thought that was kind of a cool look just with the white on there. Or another idea would be to do this and then I could put my sentiment down there. So again, I'll put that together later, but I wanted you to see that. I'm gonna leave this right here so that we can compare the next part. Okay, so what I did here was, like I said, remember I said the white creates like a, a, a primer kind of effect. You can take um, watercolor pencils, or any kind of pencils, it doesn't have to be watercolor pencils. Because it's a primer um, kind of effect, you can color over that. So I just taking my pencils, you can also do this with your blender pen and ink from your ink pad. Tap a little on a block and then pick up that color and you can use your blender pen or aqua painters with that. And now you will get, you can get a lighter color on there. So I'm using Granny Apple Green on the Mossy Meadow, just so you can see a contrast in the greens. And again, you can leave a little border of white to create that shadow effect if you like. Um, but obviously, if you were to just color this right, right on there, it's not going to stand up, stand out quite as much. But because you're doing it on the white, it really does stand out, right? So it's a different look. Okay, this was Flirty Flamingo that I did down here, and I'll just show you how it works on a petal here. So if you're looking for color on your darker backgrounds, this is the way to do it. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole flower, but you can you can see the effect that that gets, right? And that's really kind of neat. And I've seen, I um, haven't had time to do this yet, but I will. Um, I've seen people take a whole sheet to create like a background. Like while you're doing this, you may as well just do a whole sheet and then you can cut it up and do... Um, lots of projects with that one sheet where you make a collage and you're, you're coloring it in and um, adding maybe more white on top to give some more dimension. And it really is a cool effect to have that darker background with the colors on top. Okay, so that's another idea. Getting back to the embossing, I took this time, I 
took the Happiness Abounds stamp set. That's new in the new 2022 to 23 annual catalog. Coordinates with the Views of Happiness um, designer series paper and um, has some die cuts as well. So this is more of an outline, obviously. This one has a solid fill. So that's how that works with the white having something solid. So now if you have something more of an outline, I did random stamping all over this crumb cake in the white and then I heat embossed it, okay, for that to stand out. So now from here, you can shade in. So we're gonna go with just sort of like a whitewash look with, um, with that crumb cake. And we're just going to add some highlights. I'm just going to kind of add more ink here to reactivate it in case it's dried out. And with these flowers, because of all the different petals, you can put some of the white on in different thicknesses. You can do some darker and some lighter um, to give a little bit more shadowing effects. Because in nature, it wouldn't all be exactly the same anyway. Right? You can color some in or some not. Um, if you wanted to also, you have your ring anchor handy, you want to pick up more ink, you can squeeze that onto your block. Like you would a paint palette. That way you might be able to pick up some thicker areas and color those in. And, and you can do the whole thing in white if you like. Or what you can do, and maybe what I might do, I'm gonna try right now, is keeping the roses white and then coloring the leaves in a green. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so that's, um, okay, that's what that looks like there. I'm coloring that in. So let's do a leaf and, um, I'll show you how that looks. So again, we're kind of giving it a, a primer kind of effect so that we can color over it. This time I'll show you with ink. Um, because it's embossed with um, your powder, your heat embossing, any ink will stay contained within that area as opposed to bleeding out um, with the paper, absorbing it into other areas. Okay, so I colored in my ink, uh, my <laughs> colored my white ink onto the leaf, and then um, let's take maybe mossy metal again would be good. And again, I will take a clear block as my palette, and I'm going to use the opposite end. I mean, when you're done with your blender pens. Okay, you just kind of rub them until they run clean on your scrap paper. For the white, you might want to do this on a darker color paper so that you can see when it's all run clear. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some of my mossy metal. I'm going to test it out here first. Start light because then you can always add to it. And for this, I just want a subtle look. It's best to do this once it dries. Another reason to pick up your ink from your block instead of here, because you don't want to transfer any of that. But like I said, this would be better once it's dry. But I'll show you the some with the effect here. So it's a nice way to get color on your darker cardstock. Okay. So again, I'll finish this up later and You'll see. So if I were to just do this on the back, you know, it, it's fine, but it really kind of pops more on, on there once when you do it on the white. So just clean off your blending pen, blender pen like this, so you see no more of the color and you're good to go with the next one. Okay, so then another idea similar to this one is you can create little borders. I took the two little flowers from here 
and created a border down here. And it looked really cute with just, um, just the white. Let me try that. I'll show you the difference. Again, more subtle. I'm just going to put this one on the other side. Just to show you the difference. Okay, a little bit more over here. Okay, so if you want something really subtle, something like that is just fine. I put my embossing powder on while the ink was still wet and I heat embossed it down here. So again, you can see the difference. And sometimes you want the more subtle, sometimes you want something brighter. This is polished pink. I'm going to take a little bit of that ink. Okay, start it here so I know it's not too dark. And I'm gonna go over this to create a little bit more, um, kind of a highlighting effect in the background to make that stand out a little more. A little more shadowing, sort of. Now it might be a little hard to see with the camera. But my goal is to make this a little darker down here and then have it fade as it goes up the card stack a little bit to bring a little bit more attention down to the flowers down here. And then this fades away as it goes up, kind of an ombre effect. And then because the heat embossing resists any ink, you want to wipe that off. So just take a little paper towel and go over your embossed parts and you will see, let me hold it close to the camera, see how this now is much brighter than this because this still has the ink on it. Right, so you wipe it off, whatever's on the um, heat embossing will just come right off and then that will be um, a little you can see there's a little like a like a glow behind here right so then now if i want to make that even darker i could or add some white i could add some of my white ink again onto some of these flowers to make that shine through And again, we can see the difference. And it's nice to have that border from the heat embossing. Because it kind of, you can't go out of the lines too much. <laughs> and if you do it light enough, it looks like a light pink. If you do it heavier, then it has a little bit more white. And of course, you can mix and match those ideas there, right? And like I said, it will soak in a little bit more. Kind of like any paint will soak into whatever you're putting it on, as long as it's not plastic. It's some kind of canvas or paper. Okay, so now look how cute that is. And when I post pictures, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So um, the white really adds a little something different on top of the white um, embossing with the contrast to the darker cardstock. So those are a lot of ideas that you can use your white craft ink for. And I will finish up some of these projects and show you more of them later. Okay, so if you have the white ink, dig it out of your, your uh, closet or whatever, your drawers, and start using it. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.